This is 16.5 Female Reproductive Cycle Notes. The essential question is, what are the phases of the ovarian and the uterine cycle, and what occurs in each one? Female reproductive cycle typically runs about 24 to 35 days in a female, and it could vary among females, but on the average, it runs about 28 days, and we use that as a model to represent the different phases of the two cycles. There are two cycles that make up the reproductive cycle. There is the ovarian cycle, and this is the cycle that occurs in the ovaries. And it shows the maturation of the follicle and the maturing oocyte, and the various hormones that are involved with it. The two phases that make up the ovarian cycle is the follicular phase, and that comes before ovulation, and the luteal phase, which comes after ovulation. Uterine cycle is also called the menstrual cycle, and it occurs in the uterus, and it is the preparation that the uterus goes through in order for implantation to occur and to get ready for pregnancy once the implantation takes place. It is made up of the menstrual phase, the proliferative phase, which is both found, um, comes before ovulation, and then secretory phase, which comes after ovulation. Again, the ovarian cycle deals with the changes in the ovaries and the development of the follicle and the mature oocyte inside it. The first phase is the follicular phase, and this is where the follicle will um, change and develop, and the, uh, fo the oocyte becomes mature inside the follicle. Day 1 through to day 14 makes up the follicular phase, and it starts... If Day 1 starts with the beginning of the menstruation until day 14, which is ovulation. The release of the follicle-stimulating hormone by the anterior pituitary and the uh, secretion of estrogen from the follicle itself causes the development of the follicle from the primary to the secondary follicle. Remember, just before the follicle and the oocyte inside it becomes mature, mature, it is called the graphene follicle. This is the phase right before ovulation occurs. As the follicle continues to mature, it is steadily producing estrogen and small amounts of progesterone. And right around day 14, that graphene follicle will release a mature oocyte. And this is caused by the, the, the increase in estrogen, which causes a sudden spike of luteinizing hormone by the pituitary gland. Also, slight rise in progesterone causes a slight rise in temperature, about 0 0.4 to 0.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Ovulation is also the most fertile time for a female, that they can get pregnant most easily. And so measuring the body temperature can kind of give a woman w w around when they're ovulating because it can differ in each female. From day 15 through the 28 is called the luteal phase because once the mature oocyte has been released, the shell that is left over is called the corpus luteum. And so that's why it's called the luteal phase. During this phase, the corpus luteum secretes progesterone and estrogen, and so there is an increasing um, rise in progesterone and estrogen, and a release of inhibin, which suppress follicle-stimulating hormone, which means that the follicle will not develop at this stage. If no pregnancy occurs, the corpus luteum will degenerate and become something called the corpus albicans, which means a white body. And because the, there is no longer a corpus luteum, the level of progesterone and estrogen will decrease. If pregnancy does occur, the corpus luteum will continue to release progesterone and estrogen will help along the development of the fetus and into a baby. Here is a graph showing you the changes of the follicle through the ovarian cycle that we've already discussed. What to note is the rise in the luteinizing hormone. And this is caused by the steady rise of the estrogen during the follicular phase. Also, the levels of inhibin is low until just before ovulation. 
And the reason why there is not a big spike in the follicle-stimulating hormone has to do with the inhibit, uh, causing the inhibition of the release of the follicle-stimulating hormone. Whereas the luteinizing hormone doesn't have an effect on the, um, is not affected by the inhibit, so there is a spike of luteinizing hormone right before ovulation, which triggers ovulation. After ovulation, due to the corpus luteum, the corpus luteum will release progesterone and estrogen. A lot more progesterone than estrogen, that's why there's a spike in progesterone, and there is a another peak Notice that the estrogen falls and then it peaks and then it co comes back down. So this peak of estrogen and progesterone is caused by the release of those hormones by the corpus luteum. And the r r rise in inhibin is also triggered by the um, release by the corpus luteum. And the inhibin is what causes the low levels of luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone after in the luteal phase. The uterine cycle is also called the menstrual cycle and the first day one through day five is the menstruation which means that the lining of the endometrium which the inner lining of the uterus is being shed and this is due to the decline of estrogen and progesterone due to the degeneration of the corpus luteum into corpus albicans. Remember that after the ovulation, corpus luteum releases progesterone and estrogen. And if the pregnancy does not occur, the corpus luteum becomes corpus albicans, and the corpus albicans does not release estrogen and progesterone. So those levels go down. That's going to cause blood supply to the endometrium to be cut off and then the cells die and they become they become sloughed off or they shed and the bleeding can last through three to five days day 16 through day 14 is called the proliferative phase because the endometrium is getting thick again remember that as the follicle is developing it is releasing estrogen and this estrogen will stimulate the growth of blood vessels in the endometrium, will cause the thickening of the endometrium. And the thickening of the endometrium is important when the ovulated egg is fertilized, it must be implanted in the wall in order for pre pregnancy to occur. If the egg does not implant, then there is no pregnancy. Day 15 through day 28 is called a secretory phase because remember that as after, this is day 15, it's after ovulation, so the corpus, the, uh, the corpus luteum is formed after the release of the A and then corpus luteum secretes progesterone and this will cause the, it will provide nutrients to the endometrium, getting it ready for pregnancy. The progesterone will stimulate the uterine glands to enlarge and secrete lots of nutrients to sustain the embryo while it's developing, if pregnancy occurs. This secretion of these nutrients by the uterine gland is what gives the secretory phase its name. Just after ovulation, if pregnancy does not occur, then the luteinizing hormone levels will drop due to the high levels of progesterone. And remember, the high level of progesterone is caused by the corpus luteum releasing it. Then eventually, if pregnancy does not occur, the corpus luteum will degrade into corpus albicans and the levels of progesterone and estrogen will fall. Also, the levels of inhibin will go down. So the all levels of all of the hormones will be low at the end of the secretory phase. And then the decline of progesterone and estrogen will cause the, uh, the lack of blood supply to the endometrium. Then the menstrual phase will start all over again. Okay, remember that the first phase of the uterine or the menstrual cycle is the mens menstruation or menstrual phase or menses and in that time the lining this is the lining of the endometrium notice it is shedding 
This is due to low levels of estrogen, especially the low levels of progesterone will cause the blood supply, do you see the little blood vessels, decline and does not give enough nutrients to the endometrium and so they shed. This is what we call a period. But then due to the developing follicle, the levels of estrogen will go up and so then the blood vessels will resupply the cells of the endometrium and the endometrium will start to thicken. And then right after ovulation, because of corpus luteum releasing high levels of progesterone, progesterone is going to continually provide nutrients to the endometrium and then it will also the the uterine glands will release secretions which is going to find um, provide nutrients into the endometrium and that if any egg fertilized egg decides to implant that egg will have nutrients from the endometrium if pregnancy does not occur corpus luteum becomes corpus albicans and the levels of progesterone levels of inhibit and levels of all estrogen all fall then when low levels of hormones are present then the lack of blood supply will cause the reshedding of the endometrium which starts the menstrual cycle all over again 16.5 notes homework number one what are the phases of the ovarian and menstrual cycle number two what occurs in each phase of the ovarian cycle Number three, what occurs in each phase of the uterine cycle?